What's up, Keep Pounding Crew? Back today with another video. Keep Pounding. Today's topic is Heartbreak City in overtime against the Vikings. If you like the video, if you like the channel, hit that like button, hit that sub button, hit that bell, select all, leave a comment down below if y'all feel like doing so. And also be sure to check out the Facebook page, Keep Pounding in all caps, for posts, opinions, polls, and in-game reactions. Let's get into it. Alright, so... If you've never been here before, we do this by grades A through F at each position, and we talk about each position's players. That's how we roll here. Let's get into it. Uh, quarterback position. B. I saw some good passes, I saw some bad passes, and I saw some ugly passes. It's the good, bad, the ugly with Sam Darnold today. And I was kind of very, very disappointed with that. I was hoping that he would do a little bit better. And the numbers don't suggest it. First game, first play of the game, we had an interception. He sat there with the ball forever. Waited, waited, waited. Rolled out. Waited. Waited some more. And then eventually decided, okay, I'm going to force this ball into Robbie's hands. Nope. Pick. That's the start of a very, very bad day for Sam Darnold. Where he ended up 17 for 41, 207 yards, and a touchdown. With a 55.6 rating. Now, not all of that was his fault. Some of these balls were delivered on time and delivered accurately to open receivers who dropped them. So, speaking of which, we had 11 drops today by the wide receivers. Not good. That's a B minus grade from this wide receiver core. Not thrilled with that. They could have made a huge impact on this game. But we're too busy trying to force feed Robbie Anderson the ball with 11 targets and only three catches. Now take away four of those force feed passes where we didn't need to throw it to him. And we're looking at three for eight. Three for seven, maybe. Which is still not great. Ladies and gentlemen, that's still 15 for 30. No, sir. Stop force feeding this man the ball when he's not open. Sam, wake up. Open your eyes. Look around. There's other options. <sighs> your only choice should not... We should not be going to Robbie Anderson every time we see a blitz. We should not be going to, to Christian McCaffrey every time we see a, a blitz. We should not be going to DJ Moore in short yardage every time we see a blitz. Joe, give this man more options. We got into the fourth quarter. Sam's just sitting there. All his checkdowns are covered. I think it was third down. It's third, uh, third quarter, actually. And all his checkdowns were, were covered. Now what, Joe? Now what? He doesn't know how to make adjustments, folks. It, it's it's just not in his brain. It's not there. So Sam Darnold has to work with what he has. Robbie Anderson has to work with what he has. You know, he can't make the double moves that he wants to make. That he said something about last week. You know, come on. So there's only so much you can do. 
running backs, there's only so much you can do. B, probably B plus there. You know, Chuba Hubbard played well. Can't argue with that. Um, I'd give it a B plus. The only thing I would dock is that one pass, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of letting that one go. That one drop. Yeah. You know, you've been putting in the work the last three weeks, man. I, I can cut you a break. You know, you're allowed one. In the backfield, you know, not a problem. Wide receivers B, probably a B minus for those 11 drops. Yikes. Since when does DJ start dropping the ball? We knew Robbie was dropping the ball in open coverage, but since when does DJ start dropping the ball? There's something funky going on here. I don't like it. Tight end, B+. Plus. We had Tommy Tremble get involved heavily today. You know? Uh, Ian Thomas got involved today as well. Both of them combined. Uh, they tried to hit Tremble. Didn't work. Tried to force feed him once. Didn't work. Ian Thomas, though, the one catch for 41 yards. Uh, but was he ever? Was he an odd factor? Yeah, unfortunately. Until that big fourth quarter drive, where you got that massive play right there for 41 yards on fourth down. What a miracle play that was. You know, can't even get mad at that right there. Offensive line play. Was it the offensive line that was struggling today? You know, we gave up about three sacks today. But overall, John Miller is not the answer. Clearly not the answer. We got to do better. And that's why we drafted Deontay Brown. Unfortunately, Deontay Brown is still hurt. During practice. Somebody please explain to me why we have four players hurt during practice. These guys, two of them haven't even touched the field yet. And they're already hurt. One of them is a punter, and he's got a back injury. How do you get a back injury during practices? It's practice. What drills are you running? We'd all like to know. Curious minds would love to know. But anyway, we had to get a new punter because of that situation. Uh, so... Thereby, Winslow is the new guy, right? Six punts, 244 yards punting. You know, not bad. Kick three inside the 20. As long as it was 44, not bad. You know, not bad. But let's go back to the O-line. I think Dennis Daly isn't necessarily the problem. It's John Miller now. Oh. Apologies about the yawn. It's been a long day when I'm recording this, so expect some crazy stuff. Um, but John Miller is clearly the problem. Come on. We all see it. He had a holding penalty today. We all see it. Defensive tackle, Derek Brown has basically been a non-factor in the last couple of games. I'm a little disappointed by that. You know, but he is getting the job done. You know, on run stops. Occasionally. During these two games. As of today... 
You look in at a man that got one tackle out of two by himself uh, and got a quarterback hit. That's basically it from him today. I expected a little bit more. So step it up. You know, we, we all know you got more. We all know it. We've seen it. We've seen it, bro. Get to it. So I rate that a B. When it probably should be a B minus. Probably should be a B minus because we gave us some big runs. Not good. Defensive end B, we have not been getting the pressure that I want. Up through the last couple of weeks. You know, but I'm willing to be a little lenient. Spider Burns is Spider Burns, you know, and he got slowed down. Let's be real. He got slowed down by the tight ends. Phil Snow mentioned it in a presser. So, uh, teams are figuring out how to slow him down a little bit. But, he will become a factor eventually. And when he does, he's going to be a fierce factor. He's going to be a monster. Alright, so corner. Let's talk about the corners. B. I saw I saw some uh, passes given up. You know, some coverage passes given up. I expect a little bit more. But, you know, I'm not going to complain. You know, Keith Taylor stepped up today. He had 10 tax, tackles, 3 pass deflections, 1 forced fumble. You know, great job. You know, you got... Um, AJ with six tackles, one pass deflection, one forced fumble. Excellent job. You know, you can't really f fault that side of the corners. And then on the other side, these teams don't even want any part of Dante Jackson. They roasted him twice today, but I'll tell you what. Beyond that, they wanted no part of this man. He gave him the finger wag. He said, uh-uh. You ain't getting me today. <laughs> he anticipated that one play and just absolutely knocked this guy into next year. I mean, everybody loves that big hit. The problem is when you miss the big hit, when you miss the big tackle, and you give up a bunch of yards. And Sean Chandler has to bail you out. Mmm. That's not fun. That's not fun. Because Chandler is your last defense. And if Chandler fails. You're screwed. So Dante. Please stop. Going for the big hits. Like that. Just shut him down man. Just shut him down. You ain't got to be in a highlight reel every week. Just shut him down. Although I do love that. I do love that. Don't get me wrong. But I love pass deflections more than I do that. A lot more than I do that. <laughs> I get it, man. Those big hits sell tickets. I get it. But pass deflections give us wins. Pass deflections give us three and outs. That's what I need to see from you, and you delivered. You've been delivered. You got one every week so far. I'm proud of you. Keep it up, man. Keep it up. And he's got a... Uh, tackle for a loss as well. So there you go. Um, before I get into free safety, we're going to do linebackers. Linebackers did great. Jermaine Carter with 10 total tackles, 7 by himself, solo tackles, 1 tackle for a loss. 
you know, Jermaine Carter was all over the place. He was getting it done. He was stopping the runs. He was doing great. You know? Luvu. Getting those critical plays when it matters in special teams and in the backfield with one tackle for a loss. You know, out of five tackles, he had three solo ones. So he can open field tackle, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, pretty much everybody on this defense can can open field tackle. Shocker. I know, right? <laughs> What have I been saying? If you want to build a defense, make sure everybody on your defense can tackle. If they can't tackle, you're in trouble at that position. If they can't open field tackle, you're really in trouble. So, we're doing good. You know, in that, in that regard, uh, linebackers, I'd give it a B. I think. Excuse the odds again. Um, again, it's been a long day. But hey, great day for the linebackers. Strong safety, Jeremy Chin, all over the place. Sam Franklin Jr., all over the place today. Gotta love it. You gotta love it, man. You know, he, Sam Franklin's stats won't show up, really. But he did get one tackle in the special teams. But he was everywhere, man. He was everywhere. Uh, special teams B, we got that, that special teams touchdown. That was really nice in the third. We would like to see some offensive touchdowns being scored in the third. Joe, I'm looking at you. Adjustments. But, hey, we'll take the seven for the special teams, man. That That's at least something. That's something that put, is put up on the board. You remember last year where we, ke we kept losing uh, by seven points or ten points or less, you know, in those games? See, that special teams, man. That we get that lucky special teams play right there, and it becomes an overtime game. Become something else entirely. You know, it becomes a totally different game. The problem with that is we should have been winning way before that. If our man Sean Chandler at free safety was not in. I'll tell you who else was not in during this game was Melvin White. And guess what we did without Melvin White in? We were able to make some critical stops instead of giving up some big yardage over the middle. So, you know, it is what it is. And I... I honestly wasn't even sure one of those Minnesota touchdowns were touchdowns, to be fair. But I give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, hey, it is what it is. You know, I thought he was out of bounds. But that's just my opinion, you know, versus like God knows how many people on the Internet's opinions that saw the same thing or different things. On that play. So, I'll give you all the benefit of the doubt on that. Enjoy your touchdown. You know what I mean? Like, we we messed up on coverage on that. So, y'all deserved it. So, free safety, of course, is going to be that, that degrade because of Sean Chandler. It, he's our obvious kryptonite on defense and everybody knows it. Come on. What really pissed me off about this game is we put all that work, all that effort, all that energy into this game and he ruins it in two plays. Two plays, ladies and gentlemen. Deep plays. 
because everybody knows he's garbage in coverage. It's just, it, it's so frustrating to watch because we should have won that game. When I've been warning people about Sean Chandler's weaknesses since day three of training camp. Y'all can go back in my videos and look. I've been complaining about this guy every single week. Every week. I've been ranting. I've been raving. Management won't do anything. Making 920k for one whole year. <sighs> Come on, man. I'm. A, I would almost rather have Trey Boston than this. And that's saying something. I at least got a little bit of love for Trey Boston when he was playing well. But this is Trey Boston 2.0, you know, with Sean Chandler, where it's only the negatives that I'm seeing. Anybody can run stop. Anybody can quarterback spy within five yards of the run, line of scrimmage, you know, at, at free safety. A good chunk of those free agents can do that. They can do what you're doing for the same amount of money. Wake up, management. Wake up. Now, I'm not saying all of them are going to completely overshoot the gap in the red zone. I'm not saying all of them are going to be able to, to uh, make those run stops as well as Sean Chandler did. But 920K, man. And we're getting this as a result. He gives up a touchdown a year. A, a, a touchdown a game, I mean. Touchdown a game. Stop settling, management. Do you want 10 wins? Do you want a playoff trip or don't you? This is how you start to solve the problem. And at this rate, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even move this guy for a, for a ham sandwich. He's not even worth it. Not even for a seventh rounder. Not even for that. So, Sean, if you understand your weaknesses, try to get better at them. Try to make your resume look better. Because I, I don't see you getting a contract extension. I don't see you staying in Carolina after this year. I don't see it, bro. I would have cut him way before that. That's just me. Hartsville would have won that job. I've been trying to tell y'all. Management just does not want to listen. That's your choice, though. You can keep giving up touchdowns. You can keep ignoring that advice. But I'm trying to tell you, this man is the obvious kryptonite. That's why, again, coaching is C. And this mainly applies to Joe Brady. Matt Rule and Phil Snow are, are saving this grade. But Joe Brady just continues to be garbage with his play calling. And it's killing us. Now some of that is on Sam, yes. Some of that is on the wide receivers for the drops. With 11 drops today. Yes. But Joe Brady continues with the garbage play calling. So. And also, I had to downgrade that grade. Format rule as well. Stop covering for these guys. Early in the game, stop covering for them. Stop wasting timeouts. Let these guys learn. That's the only way they're going to learn is if you let them take the penalties. So I had to downgrade you. I had to. I had no choice. I love you, Matt. I love your coaching styles, man, but the timeouts, man. Stop covering. 
Did you notice Ron Rivera stopped doing that and just let him get the penalties? And they learned. They stopped doing it. I got on him for the same thing. So don't think you're in the same, you're not in the same boat with somebody, man. Don't think you're the only coach in Carolina that got roasted by me. <laughs> on that right there. I, I got to roast you on that, though. Come on, man. I got love for y'all, man. I got love for y'all. And y'all put a very, very good effort out there. An A-minus effort. Y'all really, really wanted this. I know you did. I could see it. Y'all played like it today. But eventually, our weaknesses killed us. As they did last week. As they did in Dallas. Our weaknesses killed us yet again. But shout out to all the players that did everything right and put all that effort and energy into these games and really, really wanted this game. You know, show these players some love. Show them some love, ladies and gentlemen. They've earned it. They more than earned it. So next time, when you see these players out here putting everything they have on that field, on defense, that needs to motivate this offense. That needs to light a fire in this offense. That needs to light a fire in Joe Brady. Wake up. We just lost our safety net game. Which means we cannot lose any games on this schedule that I have highlighted as wins. We cannot lose another one. Joe, we can't lose another one. Put down the Madden controller. Put down the chalkboard. Put down the etch sketch And start drawing up some real manly plays start drawing up some NFL plays this isn't college Joe we're not in LSU anymore this is Carolina we do things differently here this is the next level step up I know you got it in you because if you don't you need to go. And we need to find a new offense coordinator. Before this season is totally lost. Now management, you have the power to do something. Give this man two more weeks. That's what y'all are saying right now, right? Give this man two more weeks. See if he gets it together. Or do you even realize there's a problem? Because the fan base realizes there's a big problem. When we go from 28 points that we scored against the Cowboys to 17 against the Eagles, now we're scrambling in the fourth quarter of every game because this man does not make adjustments. And you wonder why we're losing this game against the Vikings. You better wake up. There are no more safety nets. There are no more excuses that you can use to save this season. Execute. Do what you need to do. Believe that you can win. Be predators, not prey. Get rid of the problems that we have on this team. Find a spine and do it. If you don't, we're sitting here waiting for another six win season. It's your choice. Listen to me or don't. 
I only want what's best for this team. I, I speak for the fans. I speak for my subscribers. I speak for my followers. When I say this, we all want to win. And we're only trying to find the best roster, the best coaching staff, and the best that this organization can offer to try to get that, those wins and get into the playoffs and hopefully contend for a Lombardi. Okay. We've had two shots at a Lombardi. We want one. What is it going to take? What are you prepared to do to go for a Lombardi? What are you ready to sacrifice and change to get back on track? Choice is yours. Choose wisely. Either way, as an organization, as players, as fans, we're always going to still keep pounding because that's what we do. Every week, that's who we are. So go out there, stay hungry, never be satisfied, set goals, and keep pounding.